Broadcasting from Slough. Ooh, yeah. Streaming around the world. This is Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Playing the music you want to hear. The podcast. Atom Radio. Hello and welcome to episode 121 of the Best Bits podcast. This week's podcast is in fact dedicated to a very good friend of mine who sadly lost his life in the week. If you work in radio, then you would no doubt have come into contact with Fred Marden at some point in time. Sadly, passed away on Wednesday. Fred was a a good friend, uh, never afraid to offer advice, whether critical or constructive. He'd always have something to say and uh, was someone that I took a lot of time to listen to, given that I knew that he knew exactly what he was talking about. And all of us that knew Fred lost a very good friend on Wednesday. So this podcast dedicated to Fred Martin. On the podcast this week, social networking, holidays, love, stupid things for giggles, chocolates, CV errors, calendar problems, and also toilet roll. Atomradio.co.uk Last week, it was announced that Bebo's co-founder plans to relaunch the social network with a focus on profiles and real-time interaction rather than news feeds at the core of Facebook and Twitter. Michael Birch says his aim is to provide a refreshing break from misinformation spread elsewhere, uh, and he said that he is coding the effort himself. Now, I used to have Bebo uh, many, many years ago. I did used to have Bebo. Mr. Birch originally owned it, sold it to AOL for £623 million, which is $850 million, then brought it back for $1 million, tried to revamp it before then selling it again for $25 million. So he's made quite a bit of money out of this, to be honest. But I'm just thinking, right, when Bebo comes back, like, you know, you could you could share the love, couldn't you, on Bebo? I think you could share love three times a day. Although me and my friend Blair found a hack where you could share the love unlimited number of times a day, which was great. Uh, and also you had your Bebo other half, didn't you? Mine was Laura Gibson was my Bebo other half. Um, she wasn't my other half, but she was on Bebo. But I'm thinking, though, like, you know, the guy who owns Bebo says, yeah, I'm going to recode it. I'm going to relaunch it. It's going to be bigger than Facebook and Twitter. Is it? Because MySpace was huge and Bebo was huge. Then along came Facebook. MySpace, I have no idea what's going on with MySpace now. Bebo has just disappeared, but is going to return at some time this month. So would you set up Bebo again? I don't think you can reactivate your old profile, but would you set up Bebo again? And if so, would you share the love? Would you have another half? on air at atomradio.co.uk that is my email address this morning would you reset up Bebo when it does relaunch Denham on Atom Radio Atom Radio I did have Bebo I have to say like in the in the noughties I did have Bebo and I had uh, I had another half on Bebo who wasn't my real life other half uh, and I had my uh, I found a hack with my friend Blair she found a hack where you could share the love an unlimited number of times. So uh, all of a sudden, both of us, boom, got boosted love on Bebo. And you had to choose, didn't you, your top 16. I mean, that's one thing about Facebook is in terms of Facebook, you just have friends, don't you? You have friends. Whereas on Bebo and indeed on MySpace, you always had to choose your top 16, didn't you? And that was quite tricky. And that is actually what uh, Joe says. She emails and says, I would go back to Bebo just for the nostalgia of it, but then I dread to think how I would choose my top 16 friends because I remember other friends like falling out with me because they didn't rank as highly in my top 16 as I ranked in theirs. Mick says, never had Bebo, have got Facebook, 
would give Bebo a go, although probably wouldn't leave Facebook. So no, don't see it being bigger than Facebook. What are you saying this morning? On air at atomradio.co.uk. That is my email address. I would love to hear from you. Whether you would or would not set up Bebo, whether you had it before and you go back to it, whether you've never had it and you just think you'd try it out with the owner saying it'll be bigger than Facebook. What are you saying? The dilemmas. Who to share the love with? Who to be in your top 16? Would you do it? On air at atomradio.co.uk. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. This is quite embarrassing. Morning, Amanda. Uh, When I was younger and had Bebo, you were on my friends list. You were in my top 16, but I wasn't in yours. Ah, sorry, Amanda. Sorry about that. Uh, We'll see if we can get you in if it comes back. eh? How about that? If I set up a new Bebo, you can set up a new Bebo. And I'll see if I can get you in my top 16 friends this time around. There you are. Deal? Mark Denham, Denham. It's the day today where Jonathan Van Tam, or we wake up to the news that Jonathan Van Tam has made it clear the more elaborate your summer holiday plans, the more likely you will have to cancel them. This comes the day after yesterday I managed to offend a friend of mine who shared something about holidays on Facebook. And I just thought, do you know what? I'll just comment it. And I did say anyone who books a holiday for 2021 abroad is either silly or taking a huge gamble. And about 10 minutes later, I get a message on WhatsApp, just a voice note. Yo, yo, I've had to cancel your comment on Facebook and delete it because I'm trying to promote my my friend's business. So, yeah, I did kind of put my foot in it there. But I'm just thinking, though, any travel agent that's selling holidays for 2021 must be doing so knowing that there is a fair likelihood that they won't go ahead. Mark Denham, Denham. Right, to the business in hand. Yesterday, we were going to talk about chocolate, and it was just a throwaway topic, if I'm honest, but... And there's no pun intended there. But we got an email around about 20 to 7 yesterday. A lady emailed and told me the story of her broken down relationship. Her boyfriend had ended the relationship a couple of years ago, a couple of weeks ago, sorry. Five year relationship. And the boyfriend ended it a couple of weeks ago, saying it was locked down, felt, you know, all a little bit too much, all too smothered than that. And then. Up chimes the best friend on Monday night with a message to the lady saying, do you mind if I start talking to your ex-boyfriend? Basically, what I assume that means is, do you mind if I chat up your ex-boyfriend? And we put it out and most people agreed with what I was going to say, which is it's bang out of order. Mates before dates, apart from one lady who thought that it was fine. Uh, I don't know quite like, you know, what? I don't want to get into that, but I don't know how you can justify that. Anyway. So we move forward, gets to 10 o'clock, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to email this lady. And I said to her, look, you know, I wish you the very best of luck in this situation because either way, I think you're going to lose uh, at least one person who was valuable to you, possibly both. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, You know, do what you think is best. Anyway, she emails me back and then says, look, you know what, I am going to do what I think is best. I'm uh, going to message him. She messaged him, and it turns out that she went to go meet him. They had a a meeting yesterday. They can still meet, by the way, outdoors for their two metres apart, etc., etc. They had a walk. They had a talk. And are you ready for it? The happy ending. They're back together. Yes! I did say to her in this email, like, she messaged me back about tea time and she said, I'm going to go meet him. And I did say to her, look, do you know what? I wish you the very best of luck again. Fight for what you want. You know what? You've got nothing to lose. Fight for what you want. They are back together. She emailed me last night just after 10. They have got back together. They're going to give it another go. They're not going to move back in together. They are. She's moved back to her mum's. They're going to stay just as they are, just seeing each other. They're obviously bubbled because they did live together, so they can see each other. And they're going to carry on doing that, which is great. Uh, And then he said, like, you know, he's told her once lockdown ends, we can start like proper dating again and stuff like that. And it won't just all be sat at home, sat at home, sat at home. Uh, In terms of the now former best friend, the former best friend got no reply or acknowledgement to her message. She's now blocked by the lady and by her boyfriend again. Do you know what? That really, really has warmed my heart 
and we've made a little bit of difference on this here radio show. What about that? Thank you so much to everyone that got involved uh, in that yesterday. And also thank you to the lady as well for sending in the email uh, yesterday, indeed, with her story. And then late last night with the outcome as well. Happy days. Mark Denham. Denham. Back on topic. Today, we're talking about stupid things that you have done for a giggle after a lady glued gorilla hair to, or sprayed gorilla glue on her hair. Let's get this right, shall we? Let's get this right. She sprayed gorilla glue on her hair for a giggle, and a month later, after washing it and failed treatment, she's had to have her ponytail cut off to ease the pain because it's all still glued together and is now off to go and get some further treatment to try and remove it. Morning, Paul. Back at uni years ago, I met a guy, we became best mates, and one day I thought it would be funny to prank him by putting hair-removing cream in his shampoo pot. And sadly, it worked all too well. We are still best mates now. It worked very well, though. It removed most of the hair off of his head. It removed his eyebrows. It removed the, well... It was a strange beard he had anyway, but it removed the beard uh, and it also took hair off his chest as well and further down as it dripped down his body. I love the fact that despite all that, you are still best mates. Mark Denham, Denham. I have to say, all is a little strange this morning because I woke up before my alarm and I woke up before my alarm and I thought, well, do you know what? I'll have a wee. So I had a wee and I thought, do you know what? I'll just have a cigarette. And I have a grey cat. He's grey with bits of white on him, but where he was laying, the white was hidden because he's decided to lay in the middle of the stairs. Now, normally when I go downstairs, he will move, but I wasn't quite sure where he was So then I had to go back up the stairs and put the light on, which then, like, woke me up further. And it was a bit of a palaver as I had to go round the cat and everything. And I thought, this is all a bit strange, isn't it? But I got there eventually, I had my smoke, then went back up to bed. And then when my alarm went off, I felt like utter rubbish. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Atom Radio at a quarter past seven on Friday morning. This is Mark Denham at breakfast. Let me explain a little more then. I've made you wait all week for this chocolate thing. You know when you buy a box of roses, a box of Quality Street, a uh, a box of whatever, and you, you pick out your favourites because that's naturally what we'll do, and there are some that you don't like, and they just get left, Right. Now, my my thoughts on this are, because this, again, inspired by my friend Blair, my thoughts on this are, we both like the strawberry creams and the orange creams, and I'm talking Quality Street here, but they do them in roses as well. The other one I used to like was coffee cream, but I find that very hard to get hold of now. But then what do you do with the box? Because I live on my own, so if I buy a box of chocolates because I want the strawberry cream or the orange cream, I then end up, I'll eat the fudge as well... Uh, and I'll eat the caramel, but then I end up with like a a bottom bit of the box that I just never eat. What do you do with them? So what do you do in that situation? What are your favourites? And then what do you do with the ones that are left over when you've finished your favourites? On air at atomradio.co.uk. A lady has made a bit of a mistake with her CV. Recently qualified, thought she would uh, start applying for some jobs, as indeed you do. And she got a template for her CV and she spent ages filling it all in. A student teacher she is, uh, and her name is Marissa Sedwell. She managed to get herself a template for her CV. She filled it all in. It was all nice, you know. She's from Florida, just finished university. Uh, Got it all out, sent it out to a few employers. And then realized the error of her ways. Now, I must say, she took to TikTok, and you know my thoughts on that, to share the mishap that had happened. But what she'd done is she downloaded this template that she wanted to use as her CV. Now, Marissa is a 21-year-old lady who has white skin. On the CV template that she downloaded, printed out and sent out, 
It has a man who is of a Caribbean appearance wearing a lab coat. And that's the picture. So she's got her name and all her details on the CV and a picture of this random man. And she has actually sent that out to people. Well done, Marissa. Uh, did any of them actually offer you a job? That's the important question. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. I am confused, right? And it doesn't take much, I fully admit that. But in terms of this Chinese New Year thing, it changes every year, which must mean, therefore, that every year is a different length. It can be any time between 21st of January and 20th of February, potentially meaning, therefore, that a year could be... 11 months or 13 months. I don't understand that, how it works. Don't get that. But then the other thing I don't get either is Christmas Day, 25th December. If you are religious, Christmas, of course, celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. 25th December each and every year. But then Easter, if you are religious, is the death of and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which happened on a Friday and a Monday. If he was born December 25th, and that is celebrated December 25th every single year. How is it then that Easter changes every single year? Why is the anniversary of the death and the resurrection not the same every single year? I don't get that. It's actually beyond me. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Morning, happy Friday, 8.26. This is Mark Denham at breakfast. Loud, proud, standing out from the crowd. If you are, by the way, hating on your ex right now, then you can actually order toilet paper with your ex's picture printed on the toilet paper. So then you can literally wipe away your excrement on your ex's face. There you are. That's uh, that's something to cheer up your Friday. So there we are, another podcast wraps up. What about it, though? Are you going to join up with Bebo again? I'm thinking about it. Seriously, I am. But then the top 16, that scares me. Because you're going to offend people, aren't you, by having a top 16 for definite. And also, if you were to get toilet roll printed with somebody's face on it, whose face would it be for you? Like, who would you want to wipe away your excrement on? That's what it boils down to, isn't it? Thank you, as always, for your uh, company on the podcast this week. We'll have another go at doing the radio show Monday to Friday, 6 until 10, and hopefully that will yield some content for next week's Best Bits, which you can catch again on the podcast. Don't forget you can subscribe on iTunes, on Spotify, on Deezer, on so many different platforms you can subscribe. Then you'll be notified every week when this podcast is released. Episode 122 will be out next week, but for now, that'll wrap up episode 121 thank you as always for having listened today see you monday morning 6 a.m atom radio playing the music you want to hear hey there teddy anxious save lives the breakfast show with margo on atom radio atom